welcome to the first uh, webcast in the um, lecture series in 2010-2011 for the History and Context of Journalism at the University of Winchester. My name's Chris Horry. Uh, I'm one of the lecturers on the course and I have with me my colleague Brian Thornton who earlier today gave a lecture about, well many things really, but uh, focusing on the Renaissance, Machiavelli and some of the trends in European thought in the, what we might call the early modern period, uh, including some of the philosophical ideas of René Descartes, who Brian uh, defined today for the students in the physical lecture hall as um, a, you know, a seminal figure in the history of ideas and really the founder of uh, modernism in philosophy. Uh, Brian, what, why do you take that view? What's so special about René Descartes? Well, because uh, his point of view was that he decided to dismiss everything that came before. Um, up to this point, especially with the Renaissance, people were um, in love with the idea of the classics of uh, Plato, Aristotle in particular. Um, Descartes was an extraordinary figure because he came to the point of view that everything that had come before um, was useless or uh, not accurate or... Um, wasn't um, true to the reality that he was surrounded by. And he came um, up with the incredibly ambitious idea to dismantle um, everything that was in his mind, all the ideas that he had gained through education or through experience, bring it down to the, the one fact or even just the singular fact that he believed was true, was the case, was uh, provable in his mind. And this was the idea that he had, he had ideas, he could think, I think, therefore I am. Um, but to, to come to this stage, <clears throat> I think it's worth sort of referring back to the Renaissance. Because without the Renaissance, I don't think we would have had an individual like Descartes. Yeah. Um, is that, would, you, would you feel that's, that's, that's true? That's right. And of course, the underlying reading for this is Bertrand Russell's book. Um, which we use as a sort of textbook in the first year at least, uh, the history of Western philosophy. So we're covering a vast uh, range. We've asked the students to read the first uh, eight or nine chapters, which deals with everything right back from uh, the pre-Socratic philosophers and the philosophy of ancient Greece, the Middle Ages, uh, really up to Descartes, which is a, divide, a dividing point in the book as well. And I think Russell puts it fairly well. Um, uh, for my money anyway, when he, when he describes Descartes as clearing away the rubble of the, the Middle Ages because various fragments, as you pointed out uh, in your lecture of the ancient world, of the philosophy of the ancient world, particularly Aristotle and Plato, have been preserved in the Middle Ages, but not much of it. <coughs> and so such uh, philosophy as had been in, inherited or preserved by the church against uh, you know, just really a total collapse of civilization uh, had turned into something of a dogma. Um, and that was something you dealt with in the sense that the Renaissance was in part a rejection of this dogmatic view of the Greek world and dogmatic view of Aristotle and Plato. Is that right? That's fair. Um, as a fair understanding, I think, of it. But the fantastic thing about the Renaissance was the birth of a, a humanistic approach. And we can see that in the artwork of the time, <clears throat> in the beautiful frescoes, um, such as Raphael's, um, where it's a glory of, uh, of, of the human form the human form as it, as it is really with perspective, with um, sort of a, a true representation of facial, facial features, uh, which was a distinct, distinctly different from what had come before in the sort of Gothic uh, iconography uh, that, we, that we see in the churches at the time. Um, so it, this, was a, this was a complete change, um, sort of taking the emphasis away from the dry, scholarly um, books that people were obsessed about, the Bible and Aristotle, <clears throat> and moving it on to, <clears throat> as, as the same famous quote goes, to have the uh, man as the measure of all things. But for Descartes, this wasn't really good enough, because he, he still saw this, okay, things have moved on, we've broken the mold of um, this sort of barren landscape that uh, existed in the Dark Ages, but he wanted to go a step further. He wanted to develop the idea. He wanted, as he said, to dismantle everything, and that's why we do consider uh, Descartes to be sort of the first of the modern philosophers. Just getting back there to humanism, 
and Renaissance humanism. Um, I mean, humanism is a term that's used very widely these days. There's the contemporary debate about uh, so-called uh, militant atheists versus the church, and you know, secular humanism is a word you'll hear the uh, American religious people uh, using to describe people who, who really are atheists. So, but by humanism here, we mean something fairly specific in the history of art. It's the rendering, isn't it, of uh, sculpture and painting in, in, in realistic, almost photographic human form, replacing much more conceptual uh, idea of art. And, and al also in the building and the architecture itself. So it, it always sort of, people might want to look at this up on the internet and look at images on the internet. Of, for me, uh, Raphael, very, very important and a master, but uh, less of a great master is Giotto, because if you see his work, you can see the transition in it. You can look it up either on the internet or, best of all, go to Florence itself, the Uffizi Gallery, if you can one day. Um, Muslims go, go to Mecca, quite rightly, for their Hajj. I think educated people in the West, many of them try and get to Florence. And the whole city is just a beautiful city of this Renaissance architecture that's on a human scale. And then you can go to the gallery and you can see in the work of Giotto, it making the transition from Byzantine-style you know, like icons they have in, in Russia and so on, purely conceptual ideas of these religious themes to faces and bodily proportions which are clearly human. And then, of course, there is David, there's um, the, the statue of David by Michael, it's Michelangelo's David as well, which is one of the crowning glories of Florence. And again, this is a realistic um, depiction when throughout most of the Middle Ages, um, depiction of the human form, certainly the naked human form, was uh, strictly forbidden. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, that's Renaissance, that, that's uh, the humanism in the art. But you spoke a lot about humanism in political philosophy. Mm -hmm. And there was a particular thinker there that you, you emphasized for the students is of, of, of particular significance. <clears throat> well, it's an interesting what you were talking about art and the representation of reality, of, of the human form in reality, bleeds quite nicely into political science. Because the exponent, the key exponent of this was uh, Nicola Machiavelli, who um, who's, who dismissed the idea of morals and um, good and uh, bad and whether something was ethical or, or not, and he produced this incredible work called *The Prince*, which was a guidebook for people on how to gain power. I think it was actually written for Lorenzo the Great.